the programme as it stands at the moment or what we are proposing is that we will probably initially start to raise awareness of a community's current energy demands and sources. The recent fuel strikes have, um, or fuel delivery strikes have helped that agenda somewhat in that it has shown the short term supply of fuel to remote or rural uh, petrol stations. But there are m many hidden energy costs that communities, or a lot of, of communities are not aware of wastewater treatment, water treatment, um, local heat, schools. So what we, after a ra raising awareness, we feel that an energy audit of daily activities and services, and those which are most important to, to different communities, would be uh, achieved through working with the community and probably bringing in some outside assistance where necessary, looking at different aspects of community daily life, food and drink, where their food and drink comes from, the transport costs and getting it there, the carbon costs of that transport, um, and whatever local food production there is, there's still a carbon cost associated with that. Uh, in terms of schools, there are already many eco-schools in the communities that we are working with at the moment. And uh, in terms of waste management, there are um, some small community waste management programs running, but uh, we think this is something that a lot of communities will have to face in the future, so we hope to bring forward this agenda through this program. Domestic heat, heat is, is one of the highest um, proportions of energy demand in uh, Scotland, and in terms of reducing the carbon emissions of domestic heat, it is going to be a, a large challenge for all communities. Sorry. Okay. Um, we hope that the programme, as it moves forward, will help develop stark examples of how future energy costs will affect communities. Um, and picking up the, on the energy efficiency themes that have run throughout today. This is an example of Lights Out London last year, where for, e for one hour um, last June, non-essential lights were turned out by businesses and by residents alike, and there was a great uptake of the, the idea. And in one hour, 750 megawatts were saved. 750 megawatt hours were saved just by non-essential lights being turned out. So it really is a, a key example of how energy efficiency can be a much greater tool in reducing carbon emissions than focusing on renewable generation projects. And we hope that these types of examples will be uh, evident to uh, communities and be promoted by communities within their own uh, areas to help residents and businesses uh, tackle their problems. We want to ensure that training provision is uh, delivered which will help communities move forward with reducing carbon emissions whether that be through local food production um, local skills in terms of uh, better waste management services better water treatment services in their own local communities and if there is a sense of ownership within <coughs> communities there is a drive to improve the efficiency of, of uh, processes we wish to work with other uh, organizations. The, the consortium I mentioned of ourselves, DTAS and the communities, is, is not a, a closed consortium and we are trying to link in with other projects that, that are around at the moment. Uh, we had a conversation yesterday with the Transition Town Network of Scotland who are also working on the same agenda and we're very aware of their work and they are of ours and we don't want to, to duplicate work. So we are trying to ensure that any work that is going on out there for community groups that it all ties in together and there's no duplication. So if you are aware of any other programs, um, please let us know. We want to help communities to, to reduce their fossil energy use and in doing so to build their local strength and resilience. This is a, a picture again of EGG, um, the hydro power scheme there, but it is a scheme that could be rolled out among other communities in uh, the Highlands and Islands and across Scotland and uh, it is something that we want to see more of. Decentralized distributed grid um, is uh, something that we want to see growing across Scotland, and uh, we want to see more linkages with the utilities. We already have a good working relationship with Scottish and Southern. We need to build on that more, and we need to build on our relationship with Scottish power. 
And finally, in summary, uh, we want to see community groups de developing the capacity so that they can deliver the advice among their community members, whether that is to businesses or residents. And we want to ensure that each community has that capacity and expertise anchored at its local level. A good example of that might be the Barra and Battersea uh, community group who are bringing forward a, a one wind turbine project for the island of Barra and are, have developed their skills to an extent that they are now uh, producing their own environmental impact assessment for their <coughs> planning application and they are now able to and, and have uh, successfully contracted to provide the same services to other community groups in the Western Isles. So if we can encourage more communities to become actively involved and develop their skills to a point where they can then go out and help other community groups, we think we'll have achieved a lot.